Hello, Ophiuchus. Welcome to your general monthly reading for the month of April 2022. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. Thank you so much for being here. Yes. Keep in mind, guys, that this is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. And just because this is dated for the month of April, it doesn't mean that it absolutely has to be the energies that are, are surrounding you for the month of April. This could, we could be talking about really anything here, okay? This is just the messages that spirit wants to bring forward towards you for this monthly check-in. Just take it as it resonates. Understand that energies are fluid and time is an illusion. Yeah? We're going to get into this, Ophiuchus, and we will see what we've got for you for the month, for this monthly message. Here we go. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Ophiuchans, sun, moon, rising, and north node. Please provide us with the best messages to guide Ophiuchus for their month, for their endeavors, for their adventures. Yes, the best message that you have to guide Ophiuchus at this time for the month of April of 2022. Thank you so very much, Spirit. All right, Ophiuchus, let's get into this. We're going to start with the Animal Spirit Guides, and we're going to get your overall energy, your overall message. Here we go. Five shuffles. This is one. For Ophiuchus, Sun, Moon, Rising, and North Node, this is two. Three. Four, and five. All right, Ophiuchus, the main thing that I'm seeing for you here, <clears throat> I'm seeing a color for you, and it is pink, unconditional love. I truly feel like this pink energy is... Um, well, okay. What I'm hearing is sources unconditional love for you. Uh, and I feel like you're really allowing yourself to accept that in your life. Um, personal struggles, identity crises. Um, these are all things that you have been dealing with in the past. A, a willingness to accept unconditional love, but also to accept self-love um, is coming online for you. I feel like you're finally... Okay, you're finally accepting this energy. You're finally allowing yourself to accept this energy. But more specifically, I heard you are finally mentally accepting this energy. So it's one thing to accept unconditional love. It's another thing to accept it in your mind, consciously. Uh, okay, yes, consciously accept it. Or um, maybe even in terms of mentality or your mental or mentally, it, it might be, it feels like actually believing in unconditional love. For some of you, it's uh, um, it's believing in the, ex in the existence of unconditional love. For some of, for others of you, it's believing that you are capable of, accept it, of accepting it, which is then kind of leading to a, an energy of allowing yourself to accept it. Unconditional love, love uh, of self, the love that source has for you. God's source creator has always loved you. Um, this is kind of taking me back to an energy of when I was a teenager in high school, I had this negative self-talk, this negative mantra, um, in that I used to say all the time. And it, it was, it was, it was literally the universe is against me. Um, <clears throat> but that couldn't be any further from the truth. And I feel like that's kind of what you've been experiencing up until this point. And it, maybe you have that specific mantra going through your head or you it's some, it's some sort of belief system surrounding that or similar to that. But I feel like you're starting to come out of that and you're starting to believe in the truth of how you are unconditionally loved and accepted just as who you are. A lot of this, I did channel this for Ophiuchus. I think the first time this message came through, it was over on my second channel, which is a love channel, Mystic Unicorn Tarot. The link to that can be found in the description box below if you're not familiar with that channel. But there was a specific message that I channeled for Ophiuchus about a few months ago in terms of, and actually the reading, the, the, the title of the reading is 
um, something like Welcome Back to the Party or something like that. And it was very much connected to the fact that Ophiuchus was omitted from uh, astrology back in Babylonian days when, you know, what we know today as mainstream or tropical or Western astrology was put into place. Plenty of reasons for that. We don't have to get into that right now, but there is an energy. There was an energy for you a few months ago um, in terms of being accepted back into the party, or at least just coming back to the party, regardless as to whether people actually accepted you or not. Because universally, in our day and age, in this time of humanity, Ophiuchus needs to be brought back into the collective consciousness because omitting Ophiuchus omitted a, an extremely important part of the process of our cosmos. And that process is healing. No, no wonder we're all so friggin' damaged so much, you know, what I mean? <laughs> you know, but anyway, um, it's very similar to that. I'm going to do my best to try and link that specific reading in here. So I'll put um, a, a uh, I'll try and put, a, if I remember, <laughs> I'll put a, a tag up at the top right of your screen. I'll also put it in the description box and I'll pin it in the pinned comment down below. But I feel like that's a very, sim a very, it's very similar. That message is very similar to what I'm feeling for you right now. Okay. Accepting a level of unconditional love, accepting the fact that source never forgot you, never omitted you, never excommunicated you. You have always been held in the warm embrace of God, source, creator and the universe. OK, and so there's an energy here for you, Ophiuchus, of finally allowing yourself and starting to accept that. Beautiful. What have we got for Ophiuchus, please, spirit? You have B. You have Panther. And then overall energy at the bottom of the deck, you have lamb. Oh, that's beautiful. Innocence. I'm also hearing receptivity with that lamb energy. All right. Uh, but you, okay. Empowerment for sure. Um, I feel like you are, okay. With First of all, with lamb, I feel like you may be getting connected with uh, your inner child. But lamb is representing that innocent, beautiful, loving energy, the way that God's source creator sees you. You are precious. You are no more precious than anyone else, but you are just as precious as everyone else. Okay. And that preciousness, you feeling the effects of God's source creator, creator holding you in that level of preciousness is empowering you panther and is providing you with the energetic material, the belief in yourself to be a working part of our system, of our ecosystem, the bee. Wow. Enough said. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Let's get into the rest of your spread here. We've got the golden art nouveau tarot. I'm going to give this five shuffles. All right. One. For my Ophi Yukins, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. No, I'm sorry, not Venus, North Node. <laughs> that was totally a Freudian slip. However, Venus could actually totally be incorporated into this because Venus is the planet of love. And I, I'm hearing the planet of unconditional love from God's source creator. Venus is seen as a representation or representative of the Empress. And the Empress is all loving, unconditionally loving, and accepting of all beings in all ways, shapes, and forms, all ways of showing, presenting, expressing, all of that. There is nothing that the Empress does not love. No one that the Empress does not love. So maybe Venus is incorporated with this. You might want to look at what's going on with Venus in your chart. If this is really in, uh, uh, resonating with you and you're interested in seeing what's happening with Venus in your chart, hit me up and let's do a reading. Yeah? Yeah. All right, sun, moon, rising, and north node specifically. Here we go. Five shuffles. This is one. For my Ophi Yukins. Two. Three. Four. And five. All right, Ophiuchus. Let's get into this for you. We're going to cut the deck here. Boop. All right. Overall energy for you, Ophi. 
We're starting you off with the Queen of Cups. And with that, I'm hearing emotional awareness, emotional fortitude. The Queen of Cups is unconditionally loving, okay? She is so loving, so nurturing. She represents that loving and nurturing aspect of the Empress, okay? Because the Empress is, all, is the queen of all queens. Uh, knowing your emotional worth, knowing your emotional value. I feel like this is a very motherly energy that this is that unconditionally loving energy that's coming forward towards you. That is, that is showing you and expressing to you just how precious you are. Okay. No more precious than anyone else, but you're still fucking precious. Okay. <laughs> you have underneath the queen of cups, you have the fool and oh my God, Ophiuchus, look at this underneath the fool. There's the empress. And underneath the Empress, you, ooh, you've got the Five of Wands. Okay, so check it out, Ophiuchus. Immediately here, when I see this Five of Wands, I'm thinking competition. And I don't think, and I don't think you're trying to compete with anyone else. I feel like there are others trying to compete with you. I literally feel like this is some petty ass middle school, elementary school schoolyard bullshit, right? Where somebody comes through and they're catching the attention of the teachers or someone that's really important to the kids around. And they're all like, no, look at me. Look at me. Don't look at them. Look at me. But this is an old and outdated energy. You are starting to take up some sort of limelight. You are starting to, you are starting to be seen and heard, I'm hearing. And that's making other people jealous. Luckily, it's not five of swords energy. This feels very petty, very petty and not even worth. Well, see, that's not the thing. That's not it either. If it were the five of swords, then it would really not be not even worth associating with or acknowledging. But here with the five of wands, this is literally more about people working out their differences. So I do feel like you need to stand up for yourself, but I also feel like Ophiuchus, you have the ability to show a higher level of um, understanding. You have the ability to be the bigger person here. And you could do that by taking this unconditionally loving energy that is pouring into you from source, this unconditionally accepting energy, and then pour that onto the people around you that feel like they need to compete with you. You can share the limelight. You can share the spotlight. No one has to be more important than the other. No per, no, in the grand scheme of things, no individual is any more important than, than the other. And I feel like you have the ability, the opportunity to show that type of unconditional love and acceptance. You don't have to stoop down to their level and reciprocate that competitive energy. You can show a different side. You can be the bigger person and be like, look, I accept you. I think you're cool. I think you're ha you have value. I think your opinion matters. I know like in the back of your head, you could be like, yeah, I know you rejected me. You're still trying to reject me, but I don't have to reject you the way you've been, been doing so. I love this for you, Ophiuchus. All right, let's move forward here. We're going to get into the first half and second half of your reading. First half of your reading is going to look at the current energies. Uh, I'm sorry, the past, the recent past leading up to the current energies. Yes. First set of surrounding energies for you, Ophiuchus. You have the page of wands. There you go. Showing up as a new person, showing up as the real you, communicating, bringing a message of passion. But I just feel like this page of wands is communication. I'm hearing communicating about your belief systems, communicating the truth of who you are, showing up. Showing up as who you are. And yes, this does involve a transformation for many of you, if not all of you, because in order for you to show up as who you truly are, you need to transform out of a level of denial of that, of holding yourself back, of keeping yourself in the shadows. So it definitely represents or it definitely incorporates or involves a, 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 a renaissance of self, a transformation of self, emerging as this new version of you, emerging with a new message to send. And that message to send is one of acceptance. By accepting yourself, you can then show others how to accept themselves. 
you would show that by contrast here. Because by you not accepting yourself, you were conforming to their belief systems, their points of view, their level of conformity. But by you showing up as the real you, being true to who you are, and also being accepting of all others, regardless of what their conditioning is, unconditionally accepting others, you have the ability to effect change, great change, and great healing, which is what you represent, Ophiuchus. Radical healing, sometimes really, really extreme healing in pretty extreme cases, but you're handling it. You're a, you're a, you are capable of handling that. It's who you are. It's what you embody. Page of Wands is coupled with, boop, the King of Pentacles. I am solid in who I am. I know who I am. I am grounded in who I am. You're not going to stop me. You're not going to sway me. But this is also you leading by example, showing the truth of who you are. Now, I, I'm pausing here because I've been speaking, I kind of feel like I've been speaking of these energies as if it's... Well, it is kind of the current energy, but it's what it's the recent past and what in terms of what's leading you up to the current energy. So, OK, you've been going through this transformative process and you've landed in a space where you are good. You're solid in yourself. OK. And you can express that. OK. All right. Let's move forward. Second set of surrounding energies for you, Ophiuchus, in the first half of your reading, the, the Knight of Wands. Being able to move forward, being able to communicate, being able to learn and to teach. So in the past, you went through a, 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 a renaissance of self that landed you in a place where you can feel really solid within yourself. And that's also providing you with the ability to help transform others or bring a message to others. The Knight of Wands is also kind of like the torchbearer, right? Right. So also like a crusader. Um, maybe crusader is not the right term because that often, you know, is pretty violent, but maybe a missionary. Okay. You have a mission. You have a, a mission. You have a message to send. Yeah. All right. The Knight of Wands is coupled with. Ooh, the devil. So your past experiences or the transformation or the unconditional love that you're accepting in your life is providing you with the opportunity to be the torchbearer and bring light, shed light on some sort of devilish and toxic associations and situations. Could very well be the conditioning that kept you out of the party all along. I'm seeing you as literally being a light that shines on the demons of others. Now be careful with that because that can leave you susceptible to, you know, negative attacks by those demons and whatnot, whatever. I wouldn't recommend that you go trying to looking for places for this to happen, but naturally allow your, your, the universe to guide you. Okay. Uh, your challenge, Ophiuchus, in the first half of your reading here, Queen of Pentacles. Wow, you got the king and the queen of pentacles. Uh, but the queen of pentacles here in your challenge represents a level of maintaining your self-worth. There will be a lot of people that will try to tear you down, drag you down, uh, make you try and um, speak negatively of you, about you, to tarnish your self-worth. But all you really need to do is hold on to it. Now, also, not only hold on to it, but embody it, okay? Uh, but also, um, this is where I, I want to go back to the Knight of Wands and the Devil. Only provide to situations, Ophiuchus, that, um, that are reciprocal for you, uh, that honor your self-worth, that are actually willing to listen, and I feel like there are going to be situations that will come to you or you'll naturally stumble upon them. Okay. I also feel like for some of you, there are going to be situations that you'll run into in which you'll want to spread your message or you'll want to share your message, but you'll also be able to discern whether or not it's really worthy of your time, attention, and energy. That's going to be your challenge. That has, that is your challenge here in terms of the past leading up to the future because you are, I'm sorry, leading up to the current energies because you are, you have your, you've gone through a transformative process. Yes. 
And in terms of the past energies, um, don't go back to anything that doesn't value you. Okay. Only move forward from here. Yeah. Okay. Queen of Pentacles is coupled with the, lo the lovers. You have a choice in terms of what you want to provide to, what you want to give your time, attention, and energy to. It is your choice, Ophiuchus. Even if the universe has led you there, I feel like the universe will be leading you to certain situations, but it will be under your control to discern whether or not you actually want to give to that situation or not. You have the right to free will. It is fully your choice. Make sure you make the right choices that honor your self-worth and your value, okay? Closing message or potential outcome in the first half of your reading here, Ophiuchus. Boop, the three of wands. You're well on your path, well on your path here, okay? What I'm hearing is it's time for you to take a more active role. Don't be so passive, okay? The three of wands is an energy of waiting for your ships to come in, but, it, but, but it's not just like sitting there, resting on your hands, just waiting for it. You have to make preparations. You've got to take action. Oftentimes this, and I, actually this card does... Yes, this card does depict it. If you look very closely at the bottom right of the card, you'll see water. It does look orange, but you'll see some water with some boats, right? This is often a depiction of this card in which you're literally waiting for your ships to come in. But if you notice, there's no dock on that, on this card. So you have to figure out a way to get yourself from the shore to that boat to receive your gifts or receive what's meant to come in for you. So there are still some energies that, some things you're gonna have to do, some energies you're gonna have to expend to be able to fully receive this, okay? The Three of Wands is also a card of keeping up a certain momentum of a trajectory that you're moving in. So again, don't be so passive. Take a more active role in the path that you're on because you're well on your way. Three of Wands is coupled with the nine of cups, beautiful. I feel like there is an energy here of you recognizing just how well or how well on your way you are, maybe even how far you've come, that's what I'm hearing, and being able to settle into a level of contentment and satisfaction, approval of self, happiness with how far you've come and the progress you've made so far. And that's providing you with a boost of energy to keep going, belief in yourself to keep going, that's beautiful. That is absolutely beautiful. Let's get into the second half of your reading. So the second half of your reading is going to look at the current energies moving off into the future, yes? First set of surrounding energies for you, Ophi, in the second half of your reading is the Ace, Eight of Wands. A clear, open trajectory, lots of communication, excellent. That is really what you need to be doing right now. Communicating to the fullest of your, your potential as much as you possibly can having open conversations and open discussions with people about the truth of reality is what I'm hearing, okay? And where you all currently find yourselves in any given moment. The way is completely open and clear for you to do so and to do this effectively. The Eight of Wands is coupled with the world completion. You're, uh, oh my goodness, Ophiuchus, if you were doubting whether or not you were ready for this, that is confirmation right there. You're ready to start the new cycle. The doorway is clear and open. The pathway is clear and open. Start doing your mission work if that's how it resonates for you. Or just start doing what you're in, go, going after what you're inspired towards because the way is open and clear. The, uh, the outcome for this is looking good because the world represents positive or, or desired beneficial outcomes. The way is open and clear. Take, your, take advantage of it. Shoot your shot. Do your thing, okay? You're ready for this. Second set of surrounding energies for you in the second half of your reading. The Hanged Man. Uh, you've gained a lot of wisdom. The Hanged Man here doesn't necessarily feel like you're stuck or stagnant anymore. It feels like you've gained the wisdom that is necessary for you to really take on this role that you're guided to take. You've got it, okay? You spent a long time in limbo, and it was very necessary for you to gain the wisdom, the understanding, the, the point of view, the perspective that you need to be really effective on your journey moving forward. The hanged man is coupled with the three, 
Yeah. <laughs> the Three of Cups. This is celebration. Okay? This is definitely celebration. You, you have so much wisdom and knowledge to bring to the collective. And sh when you find the right groups, the right people, the right individuals, it you will be celebrated. Your wisdom, your knowledge, your understanding, your point of view will in fact be celebrated. I'm really getting this energy of, oh my God, we're so happy that you're here and that you're providing us with this understanding. Like, where have you been all of our lives? Oh yeah. Excellent. Your challenge, Ophiuchus, in the second half of your reading, the Ace of Cups. There's that unconditional love that has been pouring down onto you. But, Ophiuchus, the challenge for you is to now share that love with others because your cup is running over, is full. Now you have the opportunity to provide that with the rest to the rest of the world. The Ace of Cups is coupled with the Knight of Swords. Woo! being an avenger of love. Wow. But you know, Ophiuchus, your challenge here, it's very interesting. I've never really seen this Knight of Swords this way before, but the way I'm hearing it makes perfect sense because this Knight of Swords can represent this type of energy, being someone's knight in shining armor. Your challenge is to ride into battle with this cup of in unconditional love to provide to others. And you are fully equipped for it. You have the armor. You have the defenses. You are ready. Ride into battle. And this is not violent battle. No. This is a battle of spreading unconditional love. The love that you have within yourself that you're feeling poured down onto you by source is the love that you are able to provide to the rest of the world. And yes, it's going to be a battle. Yes, there are going to be individuals that are going to try and stop you, that are going to try and tear you down, that are going to try to defeat you. But again, this armor that this knight is wearing, you have that too. You are well equipped. Closing message or potential outcome for you, Ophiuchus, in the second half of your reading, the Six of Cups. Care, grace, unconditional love, emotional reciprocity. Often the Six of Cups represents soulmates and the past, but I like to say sometimes that the Six of Cups does represent emotional reciprocity, whereas the Six of Pentacles represents physical reciprocity. But this really feels like, and you see how this young child, I guess it's a boy, you could say, it, or whatever, this one young child is, is gifting that cup of flowers to the other young child. This is showing care, grace, compassion, unconditional love. This is your overall energy, your closing message, your potential outcome. Six of Cups is coupled with... Oh, I'm being guided to take two. We have the Two of Wands. The choice is yours whether you want to do it or not. Okay, but also your potential outcome here is, is deciding on how you want to be this Avenger of Love. I want to take this because I was, I was, I'm being guided to take one more card for you here because this, ooh, Seven of Swords. Don't allow yourself to believe that you can't do it. You are fully equipped. You are fully equipped, Ophiuchus. Don't allow anyone to tell you that you can't. That you're not capable of it. That you're wasting your time. That you're stupid. That you're a fool. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't or that you're incapable of it. All you have to do is decide for yourself the best way to go about doing it. And that's what resonates with your alignment and your alignment solely. Okay? The choice is all yours. No one else can choose how to, how to, how to, uh, how to serve your mission for you. That is strictly up to you. Whatever way best works for you, best resonates for you, honey, baby, boo-boo, chow, you better do it. <laughs> okay. I'm going to get closing oracle guidance for you from the Sacred Rebels Oracle. And these cards tend to be a little, a little long, in their, long in the teeth, but this feels like the best option for you since you are absolutely a sacred rebel here. You are 
a, a warrior of unconditional love, this, this feels appropriate. Five shuffles for you, Ophi, for your closing oracle guidance. One. Two. Three. Four. And five. All right. Closing Oracle Guidance for my Ophi. You can... Oh, wait. Hold on. Let me do this first. I forgot to turn this over. All right. There we go. All right. Closing Oracle Guidance for Ophi. You can please spirit. <laughs> Card number 14, going beyond normal. Woo! Yeah, this is a long one. So <laughs> buckle up, kids. Settle in because we've got a doozy. Here we go. On the path of life, there are deciding moments where we can choose to go with the mainstream or we can dare to take a bolder, more authentic and trusting way, even if it seems riskier or less safe. To rely solely on logic and science without incorporating the mysterious and magical is a recipe for an existence that is far too dry. The sacred rebel within our hearts will always choose a juicier approach to life. You are, a, you are currently approaching such a choice point. You could say that the choice is about balance. It is less about choosing to honor either art or science, gardening or architecture, and more about integrating all approaches so that you enhance rather than hinder your life journey. Placing science or agriculture above all else kills off the rebellious heart. Steadfastly relying on logic, proof, and a complete set of plans to measure and dictate outcomes will suffocate the soul. Basing decisions on limited factors with an, imbalance, an imbalanced measure of success is unnecessarily limiting. This approach prevents us from living freely, spontaneously, and with trust so that we can rebel against the need for things to go strictly, quote, according to plan. Choose to value decisions based on passion and instinct and trust in life enough to embrace it as an adventure and let it unfold as it will. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the card down <laughs> so I can read more comfortably. Okay. There is a time and a place for logic, strategy, planning, and measurable outcomes. There are not, these are not bad tools to have, but we must be vigilant not to worship them or allow them to quash or less I'm sorry, to quash our less rational but equally valuable decision-making tools, intuition, feelings, and those things you know without knowing how you know them. The flowing, inspirational energy of the heart may have no conceivable basis in logic or reason and still be uncannily accurate. To remain rebellious, we must not sacrifice the art of emotion, instinct, passion, and intuition for the science of logic and strict planning. On the other hand, gardening and art do provide us with a plan, albeit more loosely held. This plan still requires us to set aside time to draw upon reliable methods and to prepare with certain tools. However, there is also a healthy dose of organic flow, responsiveness, and trust in the creative process of bringing something to light, to life. This leads to the cultivation of the most beautiful, abundant, and successful garden and the most vivid healing art. You are being asked to stay open to the intuitive pr approach in your life, your work, your creativity, as well as in your spiritual journey. The intuitive approach can be likened to a method of a gardener or an artist. There is a sense of what might work where and a loose or even detailed plan, but how the plan is carried out will depend on and respond to the flow of its surroundings. There is no need to control the situation, but rather a desire to nurture an idea to fruition. 
You may have pressures around you from the world or from your own conditioned nature to do things according to rules, to a deadline, or to the accepted mainstream view that you need a well thought out plan for success in a commercial venture. However, Sometimes the best plan is to do what feels intuitively truthful in the moment and to trust that you are being led towards your own growth. Adopting this approach means you have to do far less planning and far more living. It is a pure and heart-centered way to manifest your art, your life plan, and your essence into practical expression in the world. It involves a willingness to be led by nature instead of trying to control the powerful force of life, which is a bit like trying to fit a proverbial ocean in a teacup. It is far more intelligent to allow the ocean to be the ocean and to learn to swim in it rather than trying to cram it into a vessel that is much too small. This oracle brings you a special piece of guidance. You are moving outside of the plan. You are living on the border of what is socially accepted. This is good. This is fringe dwelling freedom. Others might not see this about you straight away as you seem pretty normal, but the secret eccentric streak is just waiting to show itself. And maybe you are an out and proud fringe dweller, completely comfortable with this way of being. Either way, this oracle brings you the message that you now have a chance to live from the heart more deeply and expressively than ever before. It wants you to realize that this is a legitimate, empowered, and creative way to live that honors all of who you are. You can give up forcing or squashing yourself down into a very limited set of so-called desirable qualities like intellect and control. If you are yet to relate to this consciously, this oracle brings you the further message that you are going to be breaking with tradition. Perhaps not entirely, but at least in a way that is meaningful to you. This will require you to have courage in your convictions and faith in your heart truths. This will help you and inspire others around you to step out of fear and live more freely and lovingly. You are not necessarily meant to abandon logic and intellect altogether. You are to use them to serve the desires of the heart rather than to replace its naturally spontaneous and truthful nature with controlled planning and narrow strategy. It's time to get a bit wild and let nature take its course. Excellent. So there you have it, Ophiuchus. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. If you would like a personal reading with me, definitely don't hesitate to reach out. All of the information can be found in the description box below, including a list of the readings that I offer, um, plus my email address. Shoot me an email letting me know that you're interested and I will be more than happy to get you hooked up, especially if you would like to get... Uh, an astrology reading or anything like that. I am available for that, but I just realized that that's not listed in the description box. But if you're interested in that, just email me and I'll get you hooked up. Also, if you would like to get some extra monthly content with me that is not found here on YouTube, check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash divine conversations. The link to that can be found in the description box below. And as always, please make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. With that said, Ophiuchus, I hope you have a fantastic month, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading for the month of May. Yes? Beauty month. Bye.